Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to video 20 in this series on developing a real-time strategy game in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, we'll be finishing out our construction system, despite what I said in the last video, we actually will be. And then in the next video, we'll get to the UI elements for our construction system. If you like this series so far, then hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out. And if you want to take your support just a bit further, hit the subscribe and notify icon so you know when those videos are out. And if you want to go a bit further than that, leave a comment. And further than that, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. This video has been brought to you by those Patreon sponsors. Okay, let's make a start by opening up our projects, and I'll see you in a moment. So here we are back in the editor, literally where we left off in the last video. I'm not closing anything out. I am recording these back to back like I said I would do. So we have it now that when we hit play and we hit our B key, if I didn't pause, we can then place a building and it will build. As you can see now, we've gone up to stage one, three, or two, and then three, and then we'll get the built message there. So let's take care of all of that and finishing it out. So let's go to our building manager. And we left off having taken care of all of our construction bits. So I'm just going to comment out the construction section here of update meshes if needed. And I hope I told all of that, right? I did. Cool. So once we have constructed it, get rid of that print string, let's actually take care of what we're going to do. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our building local. We are going to add this to a new array. So we're going to add it to an array. And this array will be a local array as well. And we're going to name this local array. So brought to a variable, local variable, buildings to remove local. So we're going to remove this from our list of buildings that are unconstructed. Okay, after that, what we need to do is get our building local again. And this time we're going to do set construction status from under construction to built. Plug that into there. And then I'm going to put a reroute into this. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off of this reroute and give myself a bit of room so I can actually see the reroute. And I'm going to do set building status. And we're going to set our building status back to zero. Now, in my C++ version, I did run into a weird error if there was only um, one under construction mesh that I actually had to set this to negative one. I'm not sure that'll be the same here. I don't have a single mesh to test with, so we might need to update this in the future. Just be a mi mindful of that. All we'll do is put a branch in here and we'll have the same sort of check like this, but it'll be a check length is equal to one. If it is, then we set that to negative one. If not, we set it to zero. I don't think that's gonna be the case with the non-replicated version. There were reasons for it there. Okay, so that takes us through actually getting the building to finish constructing, but we're not done here, not by a long shot. We have two more things to do. We have to handle the end of this loop. So this loop is after we've gone through all our list of buildings that need to be constructed, we want to remove any buildings that we have finished constructing. So we're gonna do another for each loop. And Remember, you don't want to edit a loop while you're iterating through it, which is why we're not removing it here. We're going to remove it after we've gone through the loop. And we're going to get our buildings to remove local. And we're going to loop through this list and remove any buildings that have been completed. So in other words, any building that's been added to that list. So again, we're going to promote the array element to a local variable. Really don't need to, but it just makes it easier to read. And this will be completed building local. Awesome. Plug the loop body into our set or a set into loop body, however you want to think about that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create two new functions, one called remove from unconstructed list, which will be part of our construction. And this will have a, build, a variable of BP building master called old, instead of new, old building. And what we're going to do first is check, is this valid? We want the one with the question mark. If it is valid, then we are going to take our list of under-constructed buildings and we are going to remove item. And the item we are going to remove 
is the old building. And actually, we're gonna do one more thing first. We're gonna break this and we're gonna add a little check-in. We're gonna duplicate this list of under constructed buildings and we are gonna make sure the length of it, so the size, the number of elements in it, is equal to or greater than one. In other words, we don't want to try to remove something that is not there. All right. Or actually, in other words, not something that's not there. We would want to make sure we're not removing something from an empty array. Right. Let's go back to our run construction event. And on our run construction event, we're just going to call that function in before I forget to do it. So remove from list of unconstructed. And the old building will be our building completed building local. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create the second function I mentioned, which will be called add to list of buildings. And this will be a list of our buildings that are owned by this particular manager. We're going to have a new input, which will be a BP building master. It'll be called new building. Right, and for this one, what we're doing is we will take a the variable here, this new building. We're going to check again, is it valid? And we want the question mark version of that. And if it is valid, we are going to do add unique to an array. And we need to create a variable for this array. And that variable will form to a variable, that is, will be list of buildings. I'm not going to categorize the function or the um, variable yet. We'll do that a little bit later. Okay, with that done, let's go back to the run construction event. And in the run construction event, we will then call the add to list of buildings. And again, it will be our uh, completed building local. So now we've removed it from this array, so we won't iterate it through it again. And we're adding it to a list of buildings we own or this manager owns and that have been constructed. And then just to be on the safe side, even though this is a local variable, I can say I get cleared every time we come into it we are going into the function that is, we are going to clear this variable anyway. And then we are going to perform a little bit of a check. We want to make sure that we should still actually have this function running. So it could be that we finished all our buildings and that we've removed everything that we need to, that we had on our list. And if that's the case, then we want to clear the timer handle we're using to run this event or this function. So we're going to get our list of under constructed buildings. We want to get the length of it we want to know, is this length less than one? In other words, is there nothing left in it? So if it is less than one, we can also do less than or equal to zero, by the way, then we are going to get our timer handle and we are going to clear and invalidate our timer handle. Okay, there we go. Next, what we need to do is we need to go over to the start of this function on this check here. And you know what? We're actually going to send cheat. We're going to copy this branch and this clear and plug it in here. So we have two methods of actually three methods of erasing or invalidating this timer handle. So our first one is we come into our set construction and we go, hey, we don't have any buildings to build actually for some reason. Uh, this really should never happen. This is false. But in case it does, we're going, all right, if the timer handle is active and we've got nothing, get rid of it. And likewise, when we run our construction, we check, do we actually have, is the game paused? And for those of you playing the home game, you might have already caught the potential error you're going to run into down the road. But continuing my line of thought, is the game paused? Do we have buildings in construct? And are there units in there? Well, we might not want the units in there because there's more than one building and it still probably is going to be running. Um, and if the game is paused, we might not want to invalidate this. But for now, that's how we're going to do it. Then our second way of clearing it out is once we've done the construction events, we check our list of buildings that are needing construction. If that list ends up being empty after we have done a construction event, then we invalidate the timer. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test it to make sure that it actually does clear this timer out and finishes construction. So I'm just gonna zoom out because I just need to see the orange lines. I know that it's gonna end there and then end up down there. I'm gonna hit play. And I'm going to go from full screen once I find the edge of the window there. And I'm just going to move the camera back down the mountain. There we go. And I'm going to hit B. 
I'm going to place it, and we can see that it's building, it's building, it's building, it's building. It is going slowly, so I'm just going to speed it up. There we go. You saw it quickly flick through the uh, one, then two, then three. And then when it's built, there's a roof. And notice that we no longer have any of those orange lines, and we have a roof on our building. So we have finished our construction. Now, if I hit B again, you'll notice, hey, nothing's happening. If I hit B one more time, it then allows me to build a second building. So let's take a look at something really quickly. I'm going to hit B once, then B again, then B again. So we have a little bit of things to clean up with regard to our player controller. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this, by the way. We don't need it anymore. And first thing I'm going to do, actually, is take all of this, and I'm going to collapse this down to a function called construction events. That's why I didn't need as much space as I thought I did, but I forgot to actually make that function, which we'll put under buildings construction. And then the other thing we're going to do is come back up here and double check what we have in terms of our setup for our input on the well debug construction, which we'll be replacing, by the way, in the next video. So we want to know, are we previewing? If we are, then we are going to do nothing. If we aren't, we're going to spawn a preview in. We're going to set ourselves to construction mode. And then if we do our previewing, then we're going to delete the preview. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's go back into here. And once we have spawned the construction, we should be entering action mode or selection mode on our primary actions, which looks correct to me. Um, so what's going on? Let's just take a look at this really quickly. Let's move this down here. Hit B, place it. I hit B again. Okay, so it's, it looks like I think I have a good idea what's going on. And I'm just going to walk you through this because I'm pretty sure what's happening here is we're hitting true. Oh, no, what's happening here is actually it's that. So that should fix the error. Okay, so now if I hit play and play, set, hit B again, there we go. So now we can have multiple buildings running. Make sure they both construct. Yep. And then this one will finish first. And then that one. What we're going to do after they're done, you just saw they both finished. We're going to go over to our building manager and make sure that nothing in our building manager is still running. So that was running construction events. Nope. Our timer has been invalidated. And again, the reason we're doing it this way is you want to invalidate that timer when and where possible. Okay. Now I'm going to double check to make sure we haven't skipped anything. Okay. I'm reviewing the prep file. I can't see anything we skipped. I thought that was going to take longer than it did. You know, sorry for this short video, but that gets us through the base of our construction system. All we have to do now is get the rest of our meshes in. And if you're following this as I am releasing these videos, you'll need to download the updated um, zip file. It'll be the same link. It will just have more buildings in it. And then we'll create our UI elements that we can switch between which buildings we want to build and have them placed in. There will be stuff with the UI that you can do to make it more advanced than what I'll show you. And I'll talk about what those options are, but we're not going to worry about like the actual sort of functionality or sorry, we're not going to worry about the uh, prettiness of the UI. We're just going to worry about the functionality. That said, that takes us through everything we need to do in this video. And in the next video, we'll be doing those UIs. So if you've liked this series, if you like this video, if you're happy with your construction system and you want to help support this channel, all you got to do is hit that like button down below. And if you want to take your support just a bit further, consider hitting the subscribe and notify icon so you know when those next set of videos are out. And if you want to go a little bit further than that, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. Patreon sponsors at upper tiers get instant access to ongoing and completed projects from this YouTube channel. And at other tiers, get access once a project is completed. All right. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.